Okay, this is my apartment. I put it on a rent and the previous tenant just uh, moved out. There's um, some issue with the kitchen sink. When they wash dishes in the sink, um, this this countertop is uh, wet because the edges of the sink is higher than the top. So the water was uh, seep inside the countertop and it's damaged. So previously I made a tray from a, a folded metal, stainless steel. Doesn't work very well. I use a measuring tape uh, to measure it and there's some gap. I mean, it doesn't fit very well. See here, uh, the water get underneath the uh, steel plate and also still wet the top of the counter. So um, I come up with a new idea to make a 3D scan of this countertop and then I will um, make a 3D print that fit the curvature of the sink so that the water will not spill out. And I think it's uh, the issue with the, with the sink being too small as well. Yeah, usually uh, most people, they will, when they put on the sink, it's going to be the edge of the sink is lower than the countertop. But this uh, particular sink, it's, um, it has a rising edges, so uh, it's very difficult to fix uh, for the water flow. Okay, and here is the scanning result. I use 0.4 millimeter for the resolution. And when you scanned and you forgot what was the original uh, resolution that you set when you scan it, you can look in here in the bottom lower left of the screen. It will show setting resolution of your scan. And I fill it with the 0.4. Uh, the new version of the Clarity Scan 4, 1.2.8. Uh, after you fuse the point cloud, it's going to turn the model into the mesh automatically. So what you see here is the mesh. Uh, not the point cloud. So uh, if I want to reverse this part um, using the point cloud, what I have to do is just export as the ASC format. Uh, the Karate Scan 4 can no longer display the point cloud in this viewport anymore. Uh, the mesh that was made automatically with the Karate Scan 4, uh, you cannot choose the number of the faces. So we have 5.5 million. But when you export uh, this scan as a point cloud, you are going to get this resolution that you will use when you fuse it. So if you choose 0.4 millimeter, then the spacing of the point cloud that you export, we have a 0.4 millimeter uh, spacing. Okay, here's in the cloud compare. This is the export point cloud. And then I'm going to measure the point distance. So now you have 
see here this stand is 0 0.4 millimeter okay if i click on here the scan is not aligned to the xy plane so what i have to do is click on here aligned using the three points i will uh, align this again in autodex inventor so this point cloud is ready for uh, reverse engineering okay here's in the autodex inventor I have already aligned the point cloud to the origin point. I use the sync tab as a reference, create a three point arc, and then I measure the center point of the sync tab to the origin point. I move it to 36.211. Okay, uh, let me show you the plan that I'm going to make. So I'm going to create a first half of the tray. So this first half will have a slope angle so that the water can uh, flow down uh, back to the sink and I will try to create uh, as small gap as possible uh, between the tray and the sink tab plan is that I will draw only the first half and uh, middle to the second half but uh, unfortunately the sink tab is not in the center of the sink the, the sink tab is lean toward the right side of the sink I need to do some uh, adjustment instead of a uh, simple uh, mirror this part copy the first half here and then I change the size about one centimeter uh, longer than the one on the right side I add the cover here on the corner of the wall between the wall and the glass and I have a, a rising edge here along the edges so that uh, it will force the water to uh, flow back into the uh, sink and when I print it I'm going to print it in this uh, vertical orientation no no like this I'm going to print it like this so that uh, I can have a smooth profile. Okay, first step I create a thin section of the pipe cloud uh, over the sink and then I start uh, tracing uh, the profiles for the tray. See here that the edge of the sink has a small bump, so that's why the water is trapped and it leaks into the countertop. Uh, next step, I extrude it uh, for 71 millimeter. The first profile that I extrude, I trace the line along the edges of the sink, and then I make uh, another sketch here. This will be a sweep profile. I'm not going to sweep all the way into the end here. I'm going to sweep it just about right here uh, before it uh, reached the end of the wall, and then I sweep it. Okay, after sweeping, I cut excess area that I don't need extrude the remaining of the part uh, I feel that I feel the gap here with the sweep command so now I have a smooth and flush surface okay next I make a cutout for the uh, sink tab and then I make uh, another cutout here for the overflow and then I sweep for the edges here it's going to be a contact face I rest it a bit so that the water won't get into the adhesive joint so I rest it about three millimeters I make a fillet corner here uh, I rest the edge by using sweep command so that uh, the water can uh, be direct back into the sink and uh, do some cosmetic chamfer here and there close the gap here I leave some space for uh, filling in the filling in the silicone and I raise up the edge here so that uh, the water won't get inside when I print I'm going to print in this orientation and if I add chamfer here I'm not going to need uh, the support okay the second half is just uh, a copy of the first half and I add the link I add the link from this point to this point it's going to be longer and I add the extrusion uh, the remaining area against the, the glass partition I make a small cutout on the corners because it's uh, in the corner here I have um, you can see from the scan data if I don't do a cutout here it's uh, it's going to crash with the corner of the wall and next I make a cutout here so that um, this line is uh, parallel to this line uh, next I make a cutout for the glass holder so I need some uh, I left some gap here the gap between the, the glass and the tray is a bit wider uh, because um, there's a silicone 
that they apply on the glass it might interfere with the uh, with the tray so i leave a gap uh, a bit wider so i sweep uh, this edge to channel the water back into the sink kitchen sink drip tray is done I should have done this uh, when the counter is new. Most people, they, they are going to put uh, the soap, the detergent uh, for this washer on this tray. So it's going to be uh, wet all the time. And uh, uh, this could uh, be a good idea to prevent if your countertop is made from, from the wood like this one. Okay, let's move to uh, 3D printing. Okay, here's in the the slicer so i have two parts uh, this one is quite tall 30 centimeters and this one is shorter about 22 centimeters in the height and the part has some uh, stiffened edge here the wall on the side here that can help uh, stabilize the part when it get taller usually if i print the part is tall i will add a tab like this i click on the part click on add add part cube and i'm going to change the size of the cube uh, to a 10 by 5 millimeter and for the thickness i'm gonna use um, choose 0.4 millimeters for the thickness and then i'm going to uh, move the tab uh, rotate it 90 degrees and then I'm going to stake the tab into the wall like this I'm going to move it up to about um, 10 centimeters make a copy another copy here so this tab will force the tree support to catch the tabs and it's going to stabilize the print you can easily cut it off so I have three tabs here uh, the tree support will come up and catch the tabs and this will help uh, to stabilize the base of the print it will be wider so it will uh, has less issue with the Z banding some may ask me why paint the support here like this yeah it's, it will uh, generate the support but you can see here it's not actually attached to the to the wall okay the the tabs it's uh I mean the wall is well so it's stronger and it's only 0.4 millimeter so I can just uh, use the side cutter to clip it off and it won't leave any mark on the surface uh, I think I have a layer shifting you can see the lines here uh, that's a layer shifting I should have added the tabs and use the tree support to help stabilize because here uh, it's it's move a bit uh, this one is fine i thought that the lips here on the edge is wide enough to support it but it's not so this part is um uh, too slender to print and give a, a layer shifting i have to put this on the sink today I use the adhesive here. I need to glue it over the sink. Okay, let's see if this will fit. I put it like this. Almost no gap. Okay, let's, let's try the other half. So I use a uh, double side adhesive to uh, tape it to the wall on this side and then this I will fill it with the uh, silicone and then I'm going to apply uh, plastic glue on this it's perfect fitting uh, I think it's slope is quite good uh, the water will drop here uh, so I have already applied uh, adhesive on one side here so next I'm going to apply adhesive on here as well Okay, let's uh, apply some uh, plastic glue here and here. So this uh, plastic glue uh, adhere very well to the PLA and the ABS. It won't work with the PETG, uh, PET or PC plastic. So yeah, other than that, you need to use uh, epoxy adhesive. So, I think the joint stage should be waterproof as well because this 
uh, plastic glue is also water resistant and I will seal up the hole here with the silicone so that there's no water can seep inside So I don't have a silicone, so I will use the acrylic instead. Acrylic is cheaper, it not as uh, durable as the silicone, but it works fine for the countersink. 